morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone. Um, it's been a great start. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Gabe. Wow, good to be together. It's really good. Look what God has done. Um, Pastor Joel asked me if I'd do a little report. Am I too loud? <clears throat> Pastor Joel asked me if I'd do a little report on family care, the ministry of family care. Um, I have the privilege of heading up um, family care, and so my first order of business is to say thank you. Because um, I am feeling that. Look what God has done. You know, I get this neat opportunity of just, you know, lining up meals. Uh, family care is meant to be just that, caring for family. And when, um, when I said yes to this, um, the Lord gave me the verse that um, I took on as a theme verse, Romans 12, 15, that says we rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. And so family care is meant to be just that ministry that comes alongside um, where people are right now in their lives. And um, so we like help to line up um, when there's a baby, maybe a baby shower or meals after the baby's born, or um, you know, if there happens to be a death that we would help with the organizing of the family and arranging food. And then those that have been ill or sick, um, when we know about them, so you can help in that area when you know that things are going on, um, let myself know, let someone know, um, gay, pastor, or myself, so that we can get, get involved and help in that area. Um, it's a great privilege. A few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, the pastor mentioned how he took an offering and we sent this offering on to Kentucky after the tornadoes hit there. And I don't know what's all involved, but I know he gave a figure of $7,000 that went on to that church and how the church was blessed. And I just wanted to stand up right at that moment. <laughs> I had so much awe and joy in my heart of like, look at this church. You know, this is really a giving church, and I am just so grateful to be a part of it. And um, I fall short. I don't see where all the things needs are, so I ask for your help. And um, at that same time, I want to say thank you. I have this wonderful team that helps, and um, you know, I could name a few. <laughs> you know, Dorothy sends cards. She always does that. That's why I said she's on my team because she always sends cards, and she's encouraging, and she's praying. Um, she takes food. Um, I have this list, a two-page list. So I say, that's my team. I've asked a few others to be, you know, involved closely. But that's my heart, is to say thank you. You know, um, I can't give all the details right now of every person that shared. Um, you could raise your hand if you've made the food. You know, I know there's a lot of you out here right now that have shared in that, offered. Maybe people that aren't even on this list have come forward. So... Um, Pastor did kind of ask me to give some numbers, and I said, I haven't kept track of any of that. But I will now, going forward. Um, I can give some of those details later. But I think the point is, um, the love, the heart behind it, and what I see, it's not just food. <laughs> you know, there's so much that is shared. You know, your time, and your heart, and your prayers. You know, just jumping in. I have not had one person say no to me. They might say, I can't right now. I can't do it now, but I can do it this time. And so, I mean, I've been blown away by people just saying, I'm here, I'll do it, you know. So so I thank you for that. Um, I do apologize to a couple of people that, you know, we have, like, didn't really know about it right away or didn't have the foresight to get it all lined up. But going forward, we're working together. So I just want to say thank you. I remember a few years ago at the old church, um, how the pastor had given us a time of prayer to just um, pray, seek him, what, do we have a word for someone that we could go out and minister to? And I just had a vision of, uh, I said, it's kind of like for the whole church. It's not for one person. He said, that's okay, share it. And so um, I had this picture of just us as the body of Christ. When we are all working within our gifts, that we are this strong, not a little dinsy chain. We are a strong linked chain. When you put us all together and we all operate in our gifts that he's given us, just uh, I want to encourage you to keep 
doing that, you know, that is not easily broken. We become unified through that. And he is given glory because of what you do, how you step out. So anytime, you know, that you have that uh, gift, just, or an inkling from the Holy Spirit, just do it. Just do it. Step out. In it. Um, found it interesting, Gabe, what you shared this morning before before having the offering, because that was the same verse I wanted to also mention, the end of that, which is Galatians 6.10, and it is out of the Passion Translation this morning. Take advantage of every opportunity to be a blessing to others, especially to our brothers and sisters in the family of faith. I mean, it's great to, to stretch a hand of compassion and service mercy to anyone. That speaks volumes, and that's how we are known as Christians. Um, but it says especially within the family of God. So I thank you, all of you. I Like almost everybody I've talked to out here, you know, you've all volunteered in some way. So I want to say thank you for being part of Family Care. And welcome to our visit. career began as most do, being a player himself. He played his high school ball in Burton, South Dakota, and then went on to play college hoops at Northern State. His career as a coach began in the fall of 1968 with the Smith High School, where he won two state championships in four seasons. He then moved to New England, North Dakota, where he spent just one season coaching St. Mary's High School. In 1973, Luchens took the head coaching vacancy at Custer High School, a school he would remain with for the next 40 seasons. Throughout his time in Custer, he led the Wildcats boys basketball program to a total of five state championships. Larry Luchens officially retired from coaching in 2014 after 45 years of coaching and a state high school record of 748 boys basketball victories. Oneida won the 69B tournament over to Smith, 93 to 90, which is still the record for most combined points scored in a championship game in any class. Probably the most exciting state tournament game I've ever coached. I mean, even though we lost, I mean, it was exciting and fun. I remember Randy Jake saying, saying to me afterwards, uh, we've got a leader standing around with every kind of coach, and he said, Coach, he said, we, we didn't play that bad, did we? And I said, no, we didn't really. In 1970, think we had a game closer than 19 points in the three games. And, uh, just had kids that all stepped up and stepped up at the right time. And it was fun. In Class A, Custer played in five straight title games from 89 to 93. In three of those years, they were matched up against the Lennox Orioles. The team that comes up first and foremost in my mind has got to be Custer. We played them all three years in the state championship game, and uh, they, you know, we won my sophomore year, and then we got second to them my junior and senior year. So Custer's always in the forefront uh, of my mind, and they were obviously coached by uh, Larry Luchens, who's just a legend in, in South Dakota basketball. His kids uh, are very disciplined. I was totally impressed when they come to this Mike Miller Classic last year. How, how well they played together and shared ball, and that's what it's all about, and that's why he's had a lot of success. He's won a lot of State titles, he's been very successful, and he's a, he's a great man. I've always said that, and I'll always say that's hell forever for him. He's the winningest high school boy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for uh, this time together. Lord, thank you for the worship. Uh, Lisa's ministry there, so thankful for her and, and this church, the giving church. So Lord, now uh, bless this time of, uh, of your word. And minister, we pray for the coaches that know you, help them be effective, efficient in their ministries. Lord, the coaches that don't know you, we pray that we can reach them with the gospel. In the name of Christ, amen. amen.
I'm Bob Parsons. Uh, I'm with COIN, Coaches of Influence. It's an acronym. You take the CO from Coach and the IN from Influence, put it together, it's COIN. Uh, last week, uh, and I've been with that COIN since 2016. Um, last week, Pastor Joel was talking about uh, Dick Bonson, and uh, you know, Joel was pretty strung out on drugs, alcohol, and the uh, Teenager, and so he did play basketball here in Custer, and so this is his freshman year. Can you identify which one is Pastor Joel in the photo? If you can't, the next photo will help you. So Joel was uh, referenced. Go ahead, Francis. That next picture there. So uh, he got sidetracked after his freshman year of basketball, and uh, last week in his message he talked about. Pastor Dick Bonson saying, if there's no hope for one person, that's Joel Tukowski. And uh, so if you have your Bibles and you want to, if you're taking any notes, I know someone is taking notes out there for a home Bible study fellowship. So first of all, the title of the message is Under the Influence. And so Joel was under an influence in high school. Drugs and alcohol. Um, Ephesians 5.18 says, Do not be drunk with wine or alcohol, which leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Kind of interesting. We had a song this morning called Fill Me Up. Fill me up with the Spirit of God. Um, and then, uh, that's Ephesians 5.18. And then if you want to turn to Ephesians chapter 2, I want to read a few verses there. This, this kind of summarizes Joel's uh, testimony last week in his message. Uh, first uh, eight verses, or seven verses. As for you, you were dead in your tra transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air and the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature, following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. But it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ. Um, the verse 4 is interesting, I think. It says, but God. So if you can go to the next one, Francis, I want to talk a little bit about a very influential man in our community many years ago. Uh, this is Pastor Dick Bonson. He was the pastor at the Custer Lutheran Fellowship back in the 70s. And uh, I want to read a letter. Um, well, it's, Coach Luchens would come out and stay with us uh, a couple weeks at a time the last couple years. So I gave him an assignment. I said, Coach, will you write about Dick Bonson for me? So Larry says, Pastor Dick was a really great guy. He was just so very special. I wish I could talk to him right now. He's passed away. I lived across the alley from him in Britain when I was in high school. He and I became very good friends as we played catch and talked athletics weekly. I had been fired from my coaching job in North Dakota after 1972 season. So I went back to Britain, worked on a farm, then at a filling station for my stepfather. I made up my mind that I would never coach again as I sat out the 1973 season. But then, about tournament time, John Bruce, who was coaching in Britain at the time, asked me if I would scout a couple teams for him. Bingo! The flames lit up again, and I knew I wanted to coach again. When I, when I was at my lowest point in my coaching career, Pastor Dick visited me and convinced me to get back into coaching and do it in Custer. I had applied for a job in Kingston, Arizona, and they offered me the job. I wasn't really interested in Custer, but Dick stopped by again the next day. 
He said Custer would have a per could be pretty good as Dave Friedland would be a junior. He might be the best player in the state. He said Custer was really interested in me and they wanted me to come out for an interview. Dick meant so much to me that I said yes to an interview. I met four sets of parents of young kids who would be playing the next four years. I went to an open gym, watched them play, and was very interested. The only negative thing was Dave Friedland had moved to Spearfish. Cherry and I went back to Britain that night trying to decide whether to go to Arizona or Custer. We finally decided the call of South Dakota was too great, and we decided to go to Custer. I coached there for 40 years. Pastor Dick was one who got me involved in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Not only did he become my spiritual leader, he would also help me with fundraisers so we could take kids to camp at Estes Park, Colorado. <clears throat> he was also the spiritual leader for our basketball team. He really knew what team meant and helped me develop teamwork. Pastor Dick was a super friend. I really miss him. I think of him often. He really helped me with my spiritual walk. He was one in a million. So the, the next picture is a picture of a, a football coach from the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Tom Landry, who was at that camp in Estes Park, Colorado. And that's Lance when he was uh, five or six years old. Uh, Lance went off and, you know, uh, Cherry said, Let's, it'd be great to get a picture with Coach, uh, coach Landry. Lance went and found him, said, hey, can you wait right here? I'm with my mom. So Coach Landry's waiting there. He goes find his mom, comes back, takes his picture in his Bronco shirt, so. Uh, and so Lance helped me, he's a co-author of a book, and so if I can get uh, Lisa and, and Gabe, if you want a book, the church has sponsored these books, and so if it's one for family, and if you want to keep it, put in your library as a reference, if it's meaningful to you, great, if, if not, pass it on to a coach somewhere, if you would. So if, uh, yeah, go ahead and pass them up right now, because we're going to do a little book review here. So, uh, as they're passing them out, I want to talk about the mission of COIN. So, um, the mission of COIN is to reach, encourage, and strengthen. To reach coaches with the gospel, to encourage them in their faith, and to strengthen them in their commitment to Christ. Um, we have uh, coaches fellowships. That's where you get a small group of coaches together to pray for each other. It's a Bible study, and they, and, uh, they encourage each other. Um, as I make the rounds, I stop by and visit with an athletic director who used to be a coach in Custer. And he says, oh, I miss that time when I was in Custer, and, and Coach Luchens would organize a time of juice and donuts before school for coaches as a time to get together to encourage each other. Um, Another aspect of COIN is to get a curriculum in the hands of coaches or athletic directors. And so uh, this is a, a curriculum called Character Matters. And the author is Wade Salem. So he takes uh, Leave No Doubt is the name of this curriculum. So L is for love, E is for excellence, A is for attitude. So each letter represents a word. And it's based on Luke 2.52. Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, favor with God and man. So wisdom is mental, stature is physical, God is spiritual, man is social. So he bases it on uh, those four aspects of being a, a complete, balanced person. And so then he has a poster goes with this. So we got a number of schools and coaches that use character matters. And then... Uh, one other thing that I do is I send out emails Monday through Friday, first thing in the morning. And so this one, it's called Wednesday uh, Wooden Wisdom on Wednesdays. So uh, Craig Implement, he's the grandson-in-law of John Wood. John has now passed away. But he has access to all this stuff, uh, the Wooden Library. And so he... And so this one talked about great minds discuss ideas. And so he's talking about uh, we had no electricity, no plumbing, or conveniences for entertainment. Dad read books to us in the evenings by the light of a coal lamp. Sometimes we'd hear Lord Alfred Tennyson's. 
Edgar Allan Poe, or William Shakespeare. Before we were sent off to bed, he would always include a verse or two from the good book. So he's talking about the greatest influence in his life, which was his dad, Joshua Wooden. And then uh, inside the book, inside the front cover, is a sponsor page. So I've had uh, Emmanuel Episcopal sponsor books, our church's sponsored books, Doug Herman, Dr. Michael Stott. And so people sponsor books by buying books so I can give them away to coaches and others. And so uh, it's a tool to be used in our coaches' fellowships. Uh, can you go to the next one, Francis? I think that's a... Uh, so that's uh, the Mission of Coin, your next one. Uh, and that's the sponsor page in the next one. So Hebrews chapter 10 says, Let us consider one another." Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Also in uh, Acts chapter 2, it says something similar, verse 40, 42. Acts 2, 42 says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So the number one thing that COIN does is encourage coaches to get together on a regular basis for the purpose of prayer and encouragement. Um, next one, Francis. So uh, this is in page... Uh, 86. So everyone can turn in your book to page 86. <laughs> On page 86, uh, Paul Anderson, who was one of Larry's assistants, said, It was during my second year working with Larry that the most defining moment of my life took place. It was late January 1996. We had just lost another very close game. Larry looked at me and said, We need to start a Bible study. It was the last thing I expected to hear from him, but it was so true. Our God, small g, had become basketball, and the failure to win games was negatively affecting our lives. That Sunday night, we had a Bible study at Larry's home, led by a wonderful couple, Rick and Jan Wilson. This became a weekly commitment, and soon my family and I began attending Living Outreach Church in Cosmo, pastored by Joel Wachowski. In late March, at this church, gave my life to Jesus. He became my Lord and Savior in my life. Larry led me to the Lord, and basketball took its rightful place as an opportunity to share the love of God with others. So, coaches' fellowships sometimes are led by volunteers from churches. Rick and Jan. Uh, next slide, Francis. So, uh, Larry was here. Uh, Rick, come on up. Larry was here uh, summer of 2020 for the Gold Discovery Days Parade, and he saw one of his favorite couples. And so I snapped a picture of, of uh, Coach Luchens with Rick and Jan. So Rick, do you remember that time of getting together? I do, but I've never seen this picture before. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, both Larry and I are recovering from uh, long-term illnesses here. Uh, and we're on the road to recovery. I just finished a year-long stint with cancer. And so this was actually one of my first outings. Uh, it was our privilege to uh, have the Bible study going with uh, Larry and Jerry and, and then the Andersons, which we led for, I think, three years or so it went, which led into several years of teaching uh, high school kids through the FCA. We had a meeting every Wednesday night at uh, Larry and Jerry's, and it started with just a few kids, and within a matter of months, we were running between 60 and 80 kids. Uh, and that was consistent. Um, 
And it was just a, a magnificent time in our lives. We really enjoyed it. Uh, we would take whole busloads of kids to uh, uh, Christian conventions uh, like Acquiring the Fire. And the, the fun thing for me is, is today, those kids are in their 40s. And so many of them, when I see them, they're, they're still strong in the Lord. So, you know, we did something. Um, you like to know that your your fruit is, is ongoing, and, and it is. And uh, so that was just a, a great experience for us. to accomplish is engaging churches, engaging the pastors, engaging volunteers in the church and to have a heart for sports, for coaches and kids. And so uh, coaches fellowships, there's uh, several coaches fellowships that are actually using the book as a study guide for their fellowship. Um, next slide, uh, Francis. So I'm going to talk about a kid here on page 236 in your book. So I want to talk about three, actually four influences. Okay, so there's a, a tough influence, uh, there's a thoughtful influence, and there's a tender influence I want to talk about using the book. And then the last influence I want to talk about is the gospel influence. But on page 236, there's a picture of Paul as a college kid. He went to West Point. I think this is the JV team he's playing on his freshman year. Paul Schaefer. I'm sorry. Did I say Paul Anderson? A bunch of said Paul. Okay, Paul. Paul Schaefer. So uh, Paul said one of the most important lessons coach taught me was during a basketball game early in my sophomore year. The game was close, time winding down, the crowd cheering loudly. I was exhausted and signaled to the bench that I needed to be subbed out to catch my breath. Coach did not suck me out. He encouraged me to keep going, but I didn't. I gave up on a play, the old opposing team scored. Coach Luchens immediately called the timeout. As the team headed the bench, Coach came out onto the floor to meet me directly. He told me, fairly loudly, as I recall, <laughs> that we're able to push ourselves so much further than we ever imagined. He knew me as a player and as a person. That yelling at me in front of everyone would not break me, but rather inspire me to push farther, play harder. The buzzer rang, timeout was over, coach sent me back onto the court to continue to prove to myself and to him that I understood the message. I remember it like it was yesterday. But that lesson has served me so well from my time at West Point, during my terms, uh, my time serving in Iraq, and now as a business leader with Johnson & Johnson. Thank you, Coach Luchens. I can never repay you for the time and energy you spent on me. So many others. Words cannot express the level of gratitude I have for you and the entire coaching staff of customers. Go Wildcats. So tough influence. Another part of the book talks about if you could make it through practice, a game was easy. Right, Justin? <laughs> Justin played on the 1990 team, the only undefeated team in Coach Luchin's career. <laughs> it's in the book. <laughs> uh, next page is 234. On page, and the next picture, so that's Paul as a sixth grader and his dad's a coach. Oh, go back to that picture one, just a little bit. I talked to the youth on uh, Wednesday night, and so um, Kyle Virtue and Brady Virtue, a couple good players, what, eighth grader and a freshman, is that right, Sawyer? So I said, hey, can you pick out uh, Kyle and Brady's dad? And right away, they picked him out. Oh, he's right next to the guy, right to the right of the guy with the circle around him, Jason Virtue. So anyway, that's when Jason was a sixth grader also. Great group of kids, the class of 93. Anyway, uh, turn to page 234 now in your book. So I want to read about a thoughtful influence. So, Coach, he could be tough on you, but he would also be thoughtful in his influence. Um, I got to know 
can you go to the next picture now? So this is uh, Dave Nicholas. Uh, Joel also referenced uh, Pastor Dave here a few weeks ago. Dave was a pastor in Rushville years ago. And then the Lord put it on Dave's heart. He had me to offer my church to Joel. The Lord already told Joel that, you know, he's going to do that. And so anyways, this is Dave Nicholas. He's now a superintendent at Warland High School, Warland Schools in Wyoming. And this is what Dave says. He says, after I graduated from Custer High School, I attended Dakota Wesleyan. I was back for the summer working for my dad on the ranch. My parents were splitting up, getting a divorce, and our family was in turmoil. Coach Luchens called me one evening and told me to meet him at the captain's table for steak and eggs the next morning. I told him that I had to work, but, and I had to leave early and be at the ranch all day working. He said, we can eat breakfast anyway. Then he would go with me to the ranch. That's what happened. He spent the day with me and just talked me through the deal. His main point, and I always appreciated, that no matter what, I could not hate my dad. Later, after a long day of putting out salt and mineral to the cows, Coach Luchens took me to an FCA event in Custer. The guy spent the entire day with me and evening, helping me get back on track and I'll never forget it. So here's a kid who was a player, he's not a player anymore, but Coach Lucius took time to care for one of his former players, a thoughtful influence. And the last influence I want to talk about is on page 244. So Michelle and Brian used to attend church here, as uh, did their two little girls. And so Michelle wrote something about Coach Luchens. My daughter Hannah and Larry had a special bond. He always had a piece of candy ready for her at church, and she loved to sit with him at church. As we planned for her sixth birthday party, she really wanted Larry Luchens to come. I told her we could send an invitation, but that he probably would not come. The day of the party, the doorbell rang. Hannah and several other kids were at the door. Brian opened it, and it was Larry Luchens. Hannah could not speak. All I heard when the door opened was a joint sucking in of air, and then the sound of it. The squeals of joy. It was quite a day. And Larry joined in the fun with all the kids. Everyone's favorite was when he posed for pictures by the Clifford Doghouse. <laughs> Hannah had the one of her and Larry framed in her room forever. He always took time for her. I remember the first time we took her to a game to see Larry coach. She was mesmerized to see him there. As soon as he saw her in the stands, he came right up to her and said hello. Again, Hannah was speechless. They shared a special bond. My husband, Brian, was down at the door when he greeted Larry. He said Larry got down on one knee, looked right into Hannah's eyes as she was speechless, and said to her, happy birthday. I am so glad you invited me to your birthday party. I thought that was so typical later. So, tender influence. Thoughtful, uh, tough, thoughtful, and tender. And the last one. Can you go to the next slide? Okay, so there's the kids at the birthday party. So, the next one. So I want to talk about a little bit about Derek and Eva. Um, coach, um, Derek passed away in 1999. And so we'll watch a four minute video here, just a little bit of Coach talks about Derek. Um, he passed away in a car accident um, with Justin's sister, Eva. Um, but, um, and can you go to the next one? So this is in 1998, and now that's the, the headstones at the Hermosa Cemetery where Derek and Eva are. And so Coach spoke last April 1 in Rapid City at the Faith and Hope Community Breakfast. And he shared, and next one now too, Francis. He shared the four spiritual laws in his closing talk. 
And so John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, is spiritual law number one, God loves us. Spiritual law number two, we've all sinned and fallen short, Romans 3, 23. Jesus died for us, Romans 5, 8. And then we receive his forgiveness, John 1, 12. And so at this time, we're going to have uh, Coach Luchens conclude. It's a four-minute talk that was last uh, spring. And i, I got to give one more commercial here. So this year at the breakfast, which is April 13, I think, it's a Wednesday, will be John Stiglmeyer, football coach, South Dakota State University. And so um, it's an annual event. This will be the 11th annual event. And this will be the fourth coach that we've had in the 11 years of doing this event. In 2018, we had Tom Osborne, uh, Nebraska Cornhusker, retired coach. Uh, we had Ron Brown, who was one of the coaches at Nebraska. Coach Luchens last year, now John Stiglmeyer on April 13. So Francis, if you can pull up that last video, and then, um, again, if you, if you want to keep the book, use it in your library. If you, if you, if you don't, you want to pass it on, or you want to give it back, so we give it to coaches. So, uh, and there's more books up here if you didn't get one, if you want a book. So, um, and the, the whole idea is for people to, to pass it on, pay it forward. And uh, we have a number of people doing that. So, thank you again. Sudden, the deputy sheriff was there knocking at my door. I wanted to know if I knew where either of the parents of uh, Derek and Eva were. Derek uh, Paulson and Eva Walsh. They went together. Great, great super couple. I said, Well, yeah, my parents on his way to Michigan, and uh, uh, Jim and Eileen are uh, in Minnesota at uh, her mother's. 90th birthday. I said, why? And he said, well, Derek and Eva were killed this morning in a head-on crash by Alpena, South Dakota. Uh, four kids in two cars were racing. They were racing. One was trying to pass. They hit the top of the hill at the same time that Derek and Eva did. Head-on, and they were killed instantly. They had been up to my house uh, on uh, Sunday. Uh, Derek had come up to visit with me, and Eva had come up to visit with Terry. And uh, Derek is talking to me. He wanted to know if it was OK if he didn't go out for football. He was being heavily recruited by uh, Northwestern University and Penn State University. And I said, yeah, you, you know, you can. You know, you can do whatever you want to. I mean, I'm not going to tell you what to do. And then on Friday, they were on their way to the birthday party and they were killed. Both uh, Northwestern and Penn State sent an assistant coach to the funeral. So you know they were very serious about trying to get him to come. Over to Bob's the other night and we were watching videos. And I was watching Derek, and I uh, watched him play in 1998 where he made the winning shot and we won. And then I watched the 1999 where we were upset by West Central. And uh, D. Smith uh, beat uh, Little Room in the semis. That was the game where, if you remember, Jess Hart had. 48 points for the little one. And uh, the announcers kept talking about how good Custer was going to be the next year with Derek back and, and four juniors. And uh, as I'm sitting there watching it, I, I knew that wasn't, that wasn't going to be. Uh, Derek never got to play his senior year. But I know that I will see Derek Eva again. I know that when I get in heaven, they'll be there waiting for me. And I'll get to see them. They were great kids. And they had active in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and they were both Christians. And uh, 
They came to understand the four spiritual laws. They knew that God loves us. They knew that we have all sinned and fallen short. Jesus died on the cross for us, and we received his gift of my forgiveness. My biggest win in all the games that were played, my biggest win was turning my life over to the Lord. When I turned my life over to Jesus Christ and was born again, that was the big win for me. And so I know that there's some of you out here that haven't done that yet. And I, I hope and pray that you do. I can't tell you how great it's been for me. And so I want to wish you faith and hope in your life. And I hope all of you find the Lord because it's been the greatest thing for me. Thank you very much for this honor. Remember. All right. Well, thank you, Bob and Lisa. I think we should give them a round of applause. <laughs> to just say how much I appreciate you guys and know family, friends since, since I can remember. So, uh, yeah, you guys are a blessing and thanks for all you do. And it's really cool to see, you know, their ministry. Um, it, it looks different for everybody, right? The majority of us won't stand up here behind the pulpit, you know, weekly as a pastor, but we all have our spheres of influence as we go about our lives, right? So Bob just faithfully doing that with... Uh, Point and before that, um, uh, the FCA, yeah, thank you. Um, you know, and so it's really cool to see. And then Lisa, just what you do with the family ministry, and uh, it's amazing. So thank you guys. And you know, it's it's cool to listen to Bob share and hear about Larry. I had the privilege of playing with him for one season in high school, and uh, yeah, what an amazing guy. And just to think of the legacy that we can leave, you know, I, I watch that and I just think, wow, like the, the lives impacted and, you know, just thinking to myself, hopefully I can have that same impact on people's lives, you know, and, and uh, that it would be an encouragement to all of us that we can impact lives, whatever we're doing, you know. Um, and I was thinking about, Bob had us look at that verse uh, in Hebrews. I'll just take a minute here before we go into some ministry time, but he, he brought up that verse in Hebrews 10, 24, uh, and mine, I've got the Passion Translation, it says, discover creative ways to encourage others and to motivate them toward acts of compassion, doing beautiful works as expressions of love. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed a habit of doing. So it's interesting there, it's a habit, it's not just a once-off, he's not saying if you miss church, you're going to hell, <laughs> amen, it's, it's a habit, it's something they've, it's a lifestyle they've developed of not meeting together, um, and there's so many excuses that can come along with that, and it says, because we need each other, in fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate that, anticipate that day coming, so right now we're just going to go into a time of prayer, praying for people, if you need prayer for anything, come up. Uh, prayer for healing, uh, whatever it may be, if there's just something that's happened in your life, you want some prayer, someone to cover you, it's a great time to, to come up and, and get ministered to, so um, we'll have that, the worship team will come up here too, and we'll do a closing song, and we'll also have some, uh, some goodies over here in the back, some yummy caramel rolls, and so if you want to just, you know, hang around and chat and, and get to know someone new, that would be great. Um, yeah, we'll have people praying, and uh, it's just such an amazing time to, to do what this verse is saying, right? So we can, we can encourage each other, we can show those acts of compassion. And even if you don't come up here for prayer, uh, you know, maybe you're feeling nervous. Maybe you're like, I don't really want to go up front to get prayer. Well, what about when you're having a karma roll and you're just talking to someone and say, hey, could you, could you pray for me? Or maybe you just say to the person you're talking, can I pray for you for anything? So, 
it's not limited to this, right? It's not limited to the people up here. We're all the body of Christ. We all have, you know, His Spirit living in us and can minister to each other. And so, if I can get Bob and Lisa to come out, pray, I think we're a few shorter than usual. And Brian and Marge, if you guys want to come up, pray, I'll just say a, a closing prayer. And then you can come up or you can go to the back. And uh, we'll end the service that way. So, God, just thank you right now. Thank you, Lord, so much for getting to hear about. Uh, just what Bob and Lisa are doing, God, how they're walking in those things you've placed in front of them, God, and just faithfully serving you, God, and, and I just thank you, God, for even that example uh, of Larry Luchins, God, and how he impacted so many lives, God, let it encourage us, let it inspire our lives, God, to impact more people, to, to have an influence on more people, God, whoever it may be, Lord, I pray that you would just even uh, highlight people to us, show us people that we can show us people that we can uh, bless throughout our week and have an impact on God. I just thank you for that, Lord. So let our, let our lives be encouraged by these testimonies, God. I pray for every person here, God, every person to experience your love, to just receive more of your love, God. Just pray that we would, we would know how forgiven we've been by you, how loved we are by you, God, that we would just know that we're your children. Just thank you, God, that you go with us as we leave this place today, God, that you're always.